Kyle, um, apologies again um, for not being able to run the online lessons this week. Um, hopefully, uh, the your classes um, will be migrated over onto my teams, um, hopefully by the end of the week, because at the minute, um, the only way that I can contact you all is through email. Um, I'm not able to contact you as a class in teams yet, but hopefully that will get sorted um, before the end of the week. I just wanted to go through a few things um, that I've been through with my photography class. Hopefully you'll find some of it, the information useful. Um, but the first thing I want to discuss really is the key assessment. Um, so the key assessment, we have decided as a department to have the same deadline day for everybody. Now, we are trying to give you as long as we can on this, where, you know, we are aware that you're doing revision for your other classes, etc. So we have decided to have the deadline as Friday, the 29th of January. Now, this is going to be almost like a coursework review. Um, so uh, I know you have all landed in your written element and the presented study. Um, so obviously that will be taken into consideration for the coursework review grade that we'll give you for your key assessment, as well as looking at your practical project. Now, at this stage, you should be coming towards the end of your stage two and moving into the stage three of this project. So in terms of those stages, this is what is entailed in a stage. So obviously you'll have your critical link, your contact sheet, um, annotations, um, as well as your selections that you've leveled, um, and then at least 10 pieces of development. Now, um, just a reminder that if it is that you're stuck on any of these things, for example, how to create, if you've forgotten how to create thumbnails or contact sheets, sorry, in Lightroom, all them videos, tutorials are available on the website. So please, please do take a look at that. Um, you know, it does show you an example if it is that you're working on a website, how you can put together annotations that are suitable to be presented on a website, you know, information there on what makes a good photography link. So please use that website um, and watch those videos and, and hopefully they'll help. Um, now, obviously, I know um, Nancy has said that some of you are working in a sketchbook and some of you are working on a website. I think, you know, we had suggested that everyone put a website together just in case this lockdown scenario was to happen again. Now, if it is that you're working on a website, you will just hand in your URL, your URL link. Sorry, you'll just copy and paste that in so then Nancy can have a look at it. Or you'll be, if it is that you're working in a sketchbook, um, either transfer some of that work over to your website or um, ultimately you could film your sketchbook or I'm asking some of my students to put all their digital work into a pages doc. So, you know, the list that I showed you before. So with the critical link at the top and then, you know, adding the contact sheets, the annotations and just having them in a long pages document. Um, again, if it is that you're struggling with this, you can speak to me. Um, we can we can discuss this on a one to one basis. That's not a problem. Um, but that's what you're going to be handing in. Now, um, this week for my lot, we've focused on development. So that idea of using and manipulating materials and experimenting with materials and processes, techniques, etc. Because this is one of the four assessment objectives that you're working towards. Um, so here's some initial ones. Um, these are sort of the very basics that you can add in terms of developing your idea. So selective colour, you know, um, adding vignettes, selective focus, you know, adding text. These are all um, really basic development ideas that you can apply to your photographs. Now, these videos are, again, all available online. You can see here that we've got a section that's called Development Ideas 1. And these are all YouTube tutorials that show you how to do this in Photoshop. So just take the time out to have a watch of these. I'm sure you have already done this, um, but you'll also notice that I've had some second development ideas as well. So I'm just going to be talking through them with you today. Um, so some other ideas for development that you can apply to your photographs, something as simple as adding text or looking at editorial design could be a way of developing your idea. Um, this is, you know, quite a simple um, and effective approach. Um, this particular project was uh, about the student's grandmother who had like an amazing life story. Um, and what she did, taken influence um, by the work of Kaylin Devaney and the Albert Hastings book, 
um, where Albert Hastings would annotate and, and you know, the photographs um, that Caelan Devaney had taken of him in his daily routine. She did the same with her grandmother. So her grandmother wrote just um, some thoughts about some of the images and um, and then she's just dropped them on top of the photograph. So you could do that. Something as simple as mirroring. So this was a student who was looking at natural forms. And obviously when you look at natural forms, there are natural um, mirroring and patterns within them. So, you know, this, this student applied the mirroring effect. This works quite well um, with architecture as well. So you could apply that idea to your development ideas. Um, folding. Now I've put together a tutorial because um, I know some of you might not have a printer at home. That's fine. Um, but I've shown you how you can actually achieve this effect in Photoshop. Um, so it's like a, a quick five minute tutorial. Very, very easy to do. Um, but some of you might wish to do that. Anyone doing the figure or anything like that. This is a great, great development idea. Adding shapes and vectors and blending them in to the photographs. Again, that could be another idea that you apply to your work collage whether it be digital or whether it be handmade um, can be a great way of developing an idea layering um, all these development ideas i've done videos on all of them so you can watch them they're all on the website some of you may want to include the element of illustration or drawing um, there's some examples here where students have applied that really successfully Again, you could draw these. You can really easily take a quick snap of them on your phone. There's apps that you can download that enable you to almost like scan it as if it was a PDF. And then all you do is drop them onto the photograph in Photoshop. Extended drawings as well. Layering. And here's an idea of how you can apply drawing to a very basic editorial sort of design idea. Now, I think Nancy will cry. I've not told her that I've done this yet. I'm not going to break it to her just yet. Um, but I, I know a lot of students are using the dark room to develop their project idea um, using contact prints and processes in the dark room. Now, unfortunately, we're unable to do that at the minute, obviously. Um, so what I've done is I've put together a couple of techniques that you can apply in Photoshop that will give you this effect. Um, by, all, by all means, it is not the same as Darkroom. I want to stress that. Um, but some of you may want to create this kind of aesthetic um, within the work. So it's called Darkroom, um, Digital Darkroom 1 and 2. So there's two videos that you can watch on the website and I, sh I show you how to apply what's called like a color half tone effect which is like this little the image turns into little dots it's like a printing it's a printing technique that we use in in, in graphics whenever you're printing anything large scale um, it, a color half tone is a process that we use um, so you could create images like this so like the one on the right hand side this is where developer developer has been sprayed or brushed onto the print I show you how you can create that by just simply using um, a Photoshop brush. Um, so hopefully um, this will give you something to do over the weekend or even into next week. Um, now, I do ask if you can please not to contact Nancy at the minute, um, just to contact me. Like I said, hopefully um, we I'll, I'll be able to contact you through Teams. Um, before the end of the week, if not, hopefully by Monday, um, and I'll be in contact with you as to what's happening with your lessons next week. If it is you do have any issues, especially regarding portfolios or anything like that, can I ask you please to contact me um, and I'll organise a one-to-one -one with you um, to discuss that and prepare you for them. So yeah, any issues, please email me um, and don't contact Nancy at this time. All right. Thank you, everyone.